going live. I am live. I think I'm live. Every time again, I am struggling <laughs> to set it all up. I don't know. For some reason, uh, it's my uh, everlasting struggle. But I think I should be live. Um, let me see if I see some people. Oh, there's already people here. I see uh, uh, Perkelena Tori from Finland. I see somebody from Moscow, Toronto. Uh, there is Jonathan Smith from New York City. Uh, Fernando Nera from Santiago, Chile. Yeah, I'm a little bit early. I'm 10 minutes early, but I'm sure you don't mind. I was trying to test it and then I thought, okay, well, anyway, if it works, then I better just go live. Oh, I see a lot of people. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, well, nice that you are all here. Um, hello from the UK, Stephen Brown, uh, Datsun from France, Abdullah from Dubai, somebody from Nepal, Norway. Oh, it's coming in very quickly now. So, oh, that's really nice that you are all here. Um, Oh, now it's going super fast. I can't, now I have the problem again. I can't see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, I see uh, Tony, Sunny says Tony. Oh, hello. And Mohammed from Malaysia. Uh, I see somebody from Kenya. Uh, Jill, Jill's from Kenya. Uh, Carl says hello, Noralee. Uh, Pete from, no, Mohammed from Egypt. Bob from. Hamilton, Ontario, can oh, okay. I can keep on going uh, on this, but maybe it's a bit uh, boring. So anyway, uh, nice that you are here in the live chat. Um, so on the announcement of this live chat, uh, I asked for, um, or I said, if you want to pop your question here, you can. So I just selected a couple of questions. I will first answer those and then uh, I will see what's coming up uh, on the live chat. Um, I hope it is all going well with the internet connection, but uh, if not, we will uh, find out. Um, so let me go to some of the questions that were asked yesterday. I got a question from Randall Wellman. What are your plans for Christmas and New Year's? I have no idea. <laughs> kind of uh, with everything, I have no idea where I'm going to be. I have this sort of feeling that I'll probably be in some sort of tiny town by myself. <laughs> It's a very likely possibility. Now, I mean, I was thinking I'm going to try to be in a place where, I don't know, maybe I could stay in a nice hostel with some other travelers around to celebrate it. But yeah, I find planning uh, so difficult. Uh, it's still uh, how much more? 10 days away or something. So uh, I have no idea where I'm going to be. But uh, I'll see uh, how it's going to look like this year. Um, Paul Harris was saying, hi, Norley, loving your adventures. How much time do you spend each day editing your videos? Really admire what you're doing. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I spent a lot of time editing the videos. Uh, it's going a bit faster now that I have this uh, Final Cut Pro 10 program. But um, yeah, it still takes me around three to four hours to make the video. Then I have to render and export it, which is another hour and a half. Then I have to upload it on YouTube, put all the tags in the title, make the thumbnail, it's another hour or something. Then I have to wait about 12 hours before it's uploaded usually, depending a bit on the internet connection. And then I spend another hour making the subtitles. I add subtitles in English and then I translate them in a couple of other languages as well. So yeah, it's kind of a lot of, <laughs> a lot of work. And yeah, if I'm not doing the videos, then I'm working on the blog and uh, on the social media. And yeah, I'm kind of working all around the clock. Uh, Marshall says, hope you have a great day, Noralee. Thanks. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Perke Nalatori, for <laughs> donating some money for a proper breakfast. That's, uh, that's really nice of you. Uh, Oh, I'm just reading the live chat again. Uh, oh, somebody from Twente. So media. Yeah, Manuel. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, oh, uh, John from Australia. Oh, there's still a lot of people coming in. So I'll just answer the next question. Oh, wait, let me answer this one quickly. R. Willem says, here's the question. Which motorcycle insurance is the best for world trip? So motorcycle insurance, you always have to buy it locally. So for example, when I arrived in Argentina, 
I bought one and actually in South America, this is the first time that I could buy an insurance that is valid for several countries. So the one I have now is valid for Argentina, Chile, Bol Bolivia and Peru, I believe. Normally it's only valid in one country. So uh, in some countries it's not even required. Uh, and in some you have to have it and in that case you can always buy it at the border but as far as i know there is not a motorcycle insurance that you can buy in your own country and that it's valid all over the world i don't believe that's the case you always need like a local insurance but usually they're they're very cheap so that's um quite easy to arrange uh okay yeah <laughs> sandeep says is that a royal enfield in the background yes it is because i am now in a, a royal enfield uh, at a royal enfield dealer because the no uh, needs a service and i was planning to try to do this live chat uh, in the place i'm staying tonight but then when i arrived here um they said like oh you can do it here if you want uh, we have good internet so that's why i am here uh i'm gonna go to the next uh, question which was asked before um, from San Cochito 75 how are the soft bags doing so far in comparison with your hard ones uh, they're doing really well I'm really happy with the soft luggage um, the main difference is the weight uh, I'm so much lighter now than I was with Santi so it just makes uh, off-roading a lot easier so I'm really happy with the bags um, yeah they're doing really well um yeah what else uh i think with the dust it's a bit harder to clean or takes a bit more time to clean because with the hard panniers you can just like put the power washer on it and with the soft luggage <laughs> that's maybe not the best idea uh but other than that uh yeah i'm really happy with it uh, it works really great so uh yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't change back to uh to hard panniers um this is always a big fierce discussion uh in the motorcycle community uh, and now I've tried both and I really prefer a soft luggage over hard luggage. Uh, <laughs> Ken Karish says, did you get any dog biscuits yet? Nope. I am not bringing dog biscuits <laughs> with me. Uh, that is a bit too much. Uh, okay. Let's go back to another question. Oh yeah, uh, Duffy Mar asked me yesterday, can you provide us a kind of map where you are? Uh, well, I tried to show uh, most videos, I tried to show it on the map, uh, but if you want to see, really see my route, then you can go to itchyboots.com slash route. And there you can see my route. I update it quite regularly. So there you can follow it uh, digitally. Uh, Jose Quino Fernandinho asked me, oh, he has a couple of questions, but I'll just answer one of them. He said, which is your dream bike? <laughs> this is a pretty good question. Well, I think now, like for the adventure part, for what I'm doing now, I think I am riding on my dream bike. For me, yeah, this is the best bike. Um, but if I would be again in one place, I wouldn't be traveling and I wouldn't be off-road. I would really want a Ducati Monster again. That is my ultimate, yeah, dream bike. Or I have so much love for this bike. <laughs> I just love that bike. It's completely unsuitable for what I'm doing now. But uh, if I ever would be in a place and I could afford it, then I would definitely go for another Ducati Monster. Because, yeah, it's just an awesome, awesome bike. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, Marco Consiglio asked me, Hi Norli, first of all, congratulations for sharing your incredible experience. My question is, what app do you use to choose the accommodations along your journey? So I just released, no, wait, was it two weeks ago? I released a blog post explaining entirely how I do this with all the apps that I use and how do I do it. So uh, I think it's easier to check that one. So that's on uh, itchyboots.com. You can find a whole article devoted to how to find accommodation on the way. Um, Pete R asked or said, you appear to have encountered more bikers this last week than normally, yet you have very little video posted of them or even your meals at local eateries. And then da da da. I had a couple of more people say uh, talking about that, like oh you didn't show them or you're hiding them or something like that. 
It's not that I'm hiding anyone from my channel, but sometimes I find it difficult that if I am taken by surprise. So for example, the biker group that I met along the way, uh, who gave me lunch, I wasn't, I didn't have any camera ready. I was just with my petrol cans filling up the main tank uh, when that all happened. And on a moment like that, I am in the moment and I'm chatting with these people and having this interaction and I, well, it's not really in my mind, but I don't want to be then, oh wait, let me get my camera and then putting a new battery in the camera and then holding it up like that while I am doing this. For me, that it kind of ruins the whole thing and I don't know, often people start to become a bit awkward when there's suddenly, when I'm holding a camera like that and yeah, sometimes I, maybe it's a, a selfish, but sometimes I also like to have a real encounter without holding a camera in the air. Um, if I have my helmet on, you know, I can just record it from here and the, the interaction doesn't really change. But if I don't wear my helmet and I really need to go and grab the camera and hold it up there, it's just, yeah, it's just not, it just doesn't work like that. So I hope you can kind of understand how that's like and it's not that I'm hiding anyone but yeah uh, sometimes I also want to have a conversation with people without having a camera there I hope you can kind of see where, where that's coming from um, <laughs> my channel says coming to Morocco anytime soon no I'm still on the way to Alaska thank you very much Jeff Leonhardt um, he, you say it's an amazing world we live in. I totally agree. Yes. Um, Randy Pullman says hello. Are organized group adventures in your future? Don't think so. you mean leading them or joining them. I think joining them definitely not. <laughs> I rather I'm more of a solo rider. Uh, leading them maybe I don't know. I don't rule anything out. Um. <laughs> Ken Peterson says, how many kilometers on your bike? Almost 11,000 now. So I am now pretty much at the same mileage that I had when I arrived in Kuala Lumpur with Basanti. So that's why I thought, okay, now I need a, a service again. Um, I think somebody asked me about that. Um, let me find that question because it's kind of on this topic. I think it was from, um, let me see. Ah, yeah, from uh, Lyle, Lyle McDonald. I uh, was asking, please tell us how the bike is performing, average mileage, need for valve adjustments, chain wear. Uh, have you? Okay, this is a different question. Um, so, I mean, I already made the video of the 11,000 kilometer service with Basanti and I did a service, uh, 22,000 kilometer service with Basanti and I did the bike review videos with Basanti. So because now I kind of, I mean, I started again with a new bike. So the, the wear and tear that I'm experiencing with the no is pretty much the same as I had with Basanti. So I just don't feel like making the exact same videos again. So for example, this service now, I am not spending time recording it. Actually, the service is happening right now and I'm doing this live chat. <laughs> so it's also a matter of time. I just don't really have the time to sit around there the whole day and recording it. And it's gonna be pretty much similar to that other video. So. Uh, maybe I talk a bit less about it than with Basanti just because I don't feel like repeating myself all the time. I was thinking, I mean, once I pass uh, 36,000 kilometers, that was what I did on Basanti, when, when, once I pass that with Dano, then I will start doing that again so we can see how the bike is doing above that mileage. But until I reach there, it's kind of the same, so I don't really feel like uh, talking too much about it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the performance It's going well. Uh, I just have to do the regular wear and tear kind of thing. Um, the chain has been doing better this time. I now have this, uh, uh Osco oiler, uh, which I use. So I uh, pull the plunger and then, uh, my chain is oiled. So the chain is now looking better than it did after the first 11,000 with uh, Basanti. 
So it doesn't need to be changed, I think, this time around. Um, so yeah, but let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, was that, that was that question. Uh, okay, let me see. Graf uh, Nim says, what a nice bike in the background. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. they have a lot of uh, uh, classics here, They're like 10 classics. They organize uh, tours here as well uh, around Chile and Argentina. It's pretty cool with the classics and also with the, with the Hermalian. Um, uh, I'm trying to do t two things at the same time. I'm not so good at multitasking, actually, but uh, and now I saw. Oh, yeah, e-bikes down under says hi, Norley. Any more calendars? No. <laughs> uh, if you follow me on Instagram, then probably you saw the videos that I posted, how my parents were packing up all the calendars. Uh, I'm just going to send out an update later today because they are all posted now. So they're all on the way. Um, but uh, I just decided to do 250, which was already so much. And uh, it was uh, also quite a big investment to order them, order all the packaging stuff. And um, yeah, there's quite a lot of money involved suddenly with 250 calendars. Uh, and now seeing how much work it was for my parents. Um, <laughs> they love doing it. They, they really were excited to, uh, to help me out. They really liked doing it. And uh, uh, a lot of the last 40 addresses, the printer broke of the printer of my parents broke. <laughs> so they had to hand write uh, the addresses. So some of you will receive a calendar with a hand handwritten address from my parents. <laughs> so um, uh, it was kind of a, a one time uh, thing. Uh, I am thinking of doing similar type of, uh, I would say that uh, actions uh, later in the year, maybe every three months have some sort of itchy boots merchandise, but it will, I think, always be a limited edition. And I announce these things on the newsletter. So if you want to make sure that you're the first one to know when something new is out, then you can subscribe to my blog on itchyboots.com. And I'm planning to announce it mostly there. So that's another reason to, <laughs> to subscribe to the blog. Um, I send an email out every two weeks with kind of an update on what's going on. And then uh, also the latest uh, blog post uh, that I'm writing. Um, anyway, I had another good question. Uh, yeah, from that was asked yesterday from Chai Tanva Dubey says, hi, since you travel such long distances daily and your journey to Alaska might take at least two years, how do you avoid being burned out and enjoy the traveling throughout the journey? Also, you inspire me and can't wait for more of your travels. Thanks. Uh, it's actually a good question because I am realizing that what I'm doing right now is with bringing out a video every other day. I mean, it was already hectic when I was doing the first trip with Basanti. But now I am even working more on the website and um, it's just because it's growing bigger. I get so many more messages all the time, which I try to respond to. And it's kind of madness what I'm doing. And I don't think I will last until Alaska if I keep on going like this, uh, because I'm just working around the clock. I'm working <laughs> all the time. Um, either writing and recording or editing or well, writing stories. So it's um, so I decided for myself, I said, OK, when I reach episode 50 of this season two, I am going to take a break uh, and I don't know, not work for two weeks, I think. Maybe do something like that every 50 episodes, take a, take a break or something uh, and recharge because, yeah, um, Otherwise, I think I'm going to burn out <laughs> somewhere halfway the trip. Um, I think I'm my own worst boss. I mean, I'm working for my... There's nobody saying I have to release a video every other day. It's just me saying that to myself. So I'm really, I'm a terrible boss and not giving myself any time off. So now I really, maybe it's good that now I also told you. So remind me after episode 50, I need a break. <laughs> And then hopefully, you know, I have um, a lot of energy again to, to then continue. So, um, yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, yeah, 
So Hita Yati Wallace says, today can't we see travel video? No, so this live chat is instead of a, a video. Um, yeah, also because, I mean, today the bike needs a service. And if I keep on releasing the videos, then the videos are going to catch up <laughs> with me. So um, I thought that's why maybe it's a good time now to do the live chat. Because uh, I can't uh, write really write today. Sai Sithart Kujari says, Hi Nurli, absolutely love your travel videos. I watch it just before sleeping. It's kind of a Zen routine I follow. That's really cool. Thanks a lot still here. Uh... <laughs> Calvatoro says, the light behind you, oh, where did it go now? Is blinking. Now I lost it. Oh yeah, maybe aliens are following you. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, Gustavo Matri says, hello, Norley. Did you solve your drone problem? Uh, remember, you have a place to stay in Temuco. My five-year-old daughter thinks you are riding to meet us. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, about the drone. If you missed it, I announced it. Or announced it. I shared it yesterday on Instagram and Facebook. I had a bit of an unfortunate encounter with a tree. Boo, sad times. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, for some videos, there will not be a drone. And I hope to uh, be up in the air very soon. But, um, yeah, you cannot just uh, find drone stuff everywhere. So I have to uh, wait until I'm in a bigger city. So, yeah, that's um, unfortunately the update on the drone. I know how much everybody loves it. I also really like it, although, well, I'm, I'm actually amazed I lasted so long without crashing it. Because, <laughs> yeah, these drones, it's just, I think everybody who has owned a drone before will know how often they crash and, um, yeah, how petrifying it is to send it flying over trees or water or anything like that. So, yeah, it's a part of the game. Uh, yeah, what can I do? Uh, I hope to have uh, have it back uh, back in the air very soon. So we'll see. Uh... <laughs> Fritz says, "Oh, it's in Dutch, but uh, he's asking me if I still enjoy it too a little bit." Yes, I do. <laughs> I do still enjoy it myself, even though uh, a bit. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, despite all the work. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I don't want to sound like this super ungrateful person complaining that uh, it's too much work. I absolutely still love what I'm doing as well. And I really enjoy it still and uh, making the videos. And um, I have my own personal favorite. Sometimes when I finish the video, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm not really happy with it, but what can I do? And sometimes I finished a video and I'm like super excited and I can't wait to show you the video. And then when when I get a lot of positive reactions to a video that just makes me feel so happy. And then I'm really glad that, um, that I spent all the time making it. Uh, a lot of people asking me about my travel plans, uh, but yeah, that's a difficult one since I don't have a, pl <laughs> a plan really. So yeah, that's uh, kind of uh, difficult. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm going to go back to... Uh, I can keep on reading the, the live chat. But um, L. McLeod says, How are the boots holding up? Really well. Really happy with them. Finally, I have boots which are completely waterproof. They keep my feet warm and dry, which is the main thing. And they're comfortable. So, yeah. On the first trip with Basanti, I went through two, two sets of boots really quickly. And uh, these ones, I'm sure they're gonna last a lot long because they are, yeah, really, they're really good. So I'm happy with them. Uh, right, have you thought? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm gonna go back to uh, some of the previously asked questions. Um, Mojo Magic says, greetings Nurli, is it difficult to find potable water? If so, how do you treat or filter your drinking water? Uh, no. To be honest, in Chile and Argentina, 
there is i mean the water quality is really good especially like in the mountains it's pretty i think clean enough to drink i have this um how do you call that again this uv thing which i can use to clean water but i have not been using that really uh to clean like natural water i've been filling up my camel bag with tap water in hostels and then using the uv to uh, make sure it's uh, potable um i think i mean because i don't camp i usually uh, have enough water uh, the one day that i got water from the people that i met along the route it was just because i forgot to fill up the camel bag in the morning so <laughs> I kind of left without, without, without a lot of water. I could have maybe filled it up from the river, but yeah, I don't know. They gave me good water, so it wasn't, wasn't necessary. Uh, let me see. I think something is not... Sebastian Kobialka says, will you visit Venezuela? Or is it too dangerous? Yeah, Venezuela is not in the plans to visit. I think not a good time to uh, to visit Venezuela. There's quite some uh, problems there, but um, um, don't think I'll... Oh, thank you, Rob Boyd, <laughs> who says good luck. Um, I think I get a lot of the same questions. No. Uh, P.S. Sutter says, which model of binocular do you use? I don't have a binocular with me. Nope. Uh, Patrick Roberts says, which country are you in now? Uh, so as always, I don't really want to share my current location um, because I just get a lot of people really trying to <laughs> track me down. But I am either in Argentina or Chile. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough, no? Um, Nida C says, Hi Norley, would it be possible to add at the end of your videos a sequence of photos? Um, you can, I mean, the photos, I post them on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I, I want to keep that separate. I don't want to uh, incorporate that into the video, I think. Um, so if you want to see pictures that I take, then uh, you can find those on uh, Instagram on Itchy Boots Travel or on Facebook on my Itchy Boots page. Uh... <laughs> Andy High says interested in your file 4K handling. I'm not sure what you mean by that, to be honest. Um... I record in 4K and uh, I process the videos also in 4K, which is a bit difficult because the, the videos, yeah, the files just become really big and um, yeah, often the Wi-Fi is not so good. So yeah, it takes a long time to, uh, to, to upload videos, um, usually around 12 hours to upload one video, but I think it's still worth it because the quality is... Uh, is very good in, in 4K, I think. Um, Paul, oh wait, where did it go now? Uh, oh, now I lost it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to some of these questions. Um, Louis Leroux says, Hi Itchy, I'm interested in the way you manage your audio slash video. How do you start your recording and how do you record audio on the GoPro fitted to your handlebar? Um, well, I when I start recording, I just press the button <laughs> and then uh, press it again to stop. Uh, if I have the camera on the handlebar and if I want to record while riding and while speaking, I actually have to record at the same time from my helmet because that has the internal or the external microphone, which is uh, close to here. And then when I edit the video, I have to use the audio and put it behind there. But I've only done that a few times, uh, quite in the beginning. I don't generally do that because it's so much extra editing work. 
to really match the audio and pff, <laughs> it is too much work to do on a daily basis. So uh, I don't do that too much. Uh, Dauphin Fritz said, sorry, but I still can't find where you identify the high tech earplugs you use. Um, so well, I, I wouldn't really call them high tech, but the, the earplugs that I use, they are, uh, how you say that, made for my ears, you know, so they make a, they, they pour this stuff in your ear to make a mold. Um, and then they are soft and I can change the filter, uh, which is inside. And I mean, I didn't put a link anywhere because it's not a certain brand or anything like that. I just went in the Netherlands to a hearing aid shop, you know, where uh, deaf people go and that kind of stuff. And there they did it and I could buy it there. So I would suggest find a uh, local hearing aid shop in your area and ask them about um, earplugs for motorcyclists. And I would suggest taking the soft ones because it's more comfortable. Um, yeah, I hope. I hope that helps. Um, Mark Lowry asked me regarding the practicalities of traveling in South America. Do you need a visa for any of the countries you will travel through? You had a carnet when you were in Asia. Is one required where you are now? Uh, yeah, I always get questions about the visas, but that, that's the thing. I will say it again. <laughs> the visas, it depends on your nationality. So I can't really give any like a general advice because it depends on where you're from. With my Dutch passport, I generally don't need a visa in any of these countries, but I don't know where you're from. So for you, it might be different, but if you just Google, uh, yeah, just Google it and you will easily find the information uh, or call an embassy or something like that. Uh, a carnet is not required for the Americas. Carnet is required mostly in Asia and Africa, um, but in uh, the Americas, you don't need a carnet. So that is really great. Uh, oh, oops. Okay, let's go to the back to this one. I think something is is I am going to. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just gonna change the settings. <laughs> I can I can change in the settings that if if you put a comment or if you write something that you have to uh, wait a little bit before you can write again because now I get ten messages from the same people and then I just can't see anything anymore. Wait, let me see. Um, okay. Now it should be better, I think. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, oh yeah. TL says, Sweden's lady biker, and in, any interesting things she told you about her trip? Where has she traveling from and to? Uh, I, I think a lot of people really liked the chat which I had with the lady, uh, but I didn't cut out much. That was pretty much the whole conversation because a car was coming and we were standing in the middle of the road. So when we saw the car coming, we were about like, okay, uh, let's go. So uh, all I know that she's cycling on the Carretera Austral. I don't think she has a YouTube channel or anything like that. Um, but that, uh, yeah, that was a nice surprise uh, meet. Sevaro <laughs> says, are you planning to make an outtake video with funny scenes? <laughs> well, I think I don't cut out many funny scenes. I think all the funny scenes are in there if they are happening. Uh, but uh, yeah, the thing is, if I was thinking maybe I should make another compilation video or something. But um, the thing that's holding me back is that I have so much footage and if I would have to make a compilation video or find funny scenes back into that, oh my goodness, that is gonna be an absolute nightmare. Uh, keeping up with the daily videos is okay, but uh, going back and uh, going through all of that, that's uh, yeah, something which would be great, but um, yeah, too time consuming at the moment, uh, to be honest. Paulo Suarez is asking me about the story behind Itchy Boots. This is one of the frequently asked questions uh, on itchyboots.com slash FAQ. You can find answers to the frequently asked questions about uh, where itchyboots does come from, the names Basanti and the no, how, how do I fund my trip? All those questions are, uh, are answered there. So I won't go um, into those. Uh... <laughs> 
Ugly canine drone says, do you have some ways to protect yourself like a gun? I regularly get people asking me if I have a gun. I think for, I think in the United States, it's very common to have guns where I'm from. We don't have guns <laughs> is not a normal thing. And traveling with a gun, getting a gun across the border is absolutely uh, out of the question. I would never want to even own a gun. I'm not a gun person. And it's definitely, yeah, I know it's no, I do not would never carry a weapon with me. And that is just, um, yeah, no. Not necessary as well, because uh, yeah, I truly believe that uh, not everybody in the world is uh, out there to uh, to get you. So, uh, um, nah, it's really not uh, not necessary. Um, oh, Steve Smith says hi, Norley. Do you think there will be a book in the future? Maybe, maybe. Um, not yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. I guess. Um, uh, Kyo Kain Lot says the bike behind you looks like a triumph. No, no, of course not. It's a Rogan Field. Uh, Dave Kalman says, have you had many close calls with cars? It's a good question. Recently, no. I have to say the drivers in Argentina and Chile are good drivers. I have no problem with the cars or the way that people drive. I think the most close calls were in Iran. There they were driving like absolute maniacs. <laughs> but um, no, so far it's actually been really good. <laughs> Wait, now I missed it. Somebody said... Uh, if you would have a superpower, what would it be? Who said it? Oh yeah, uh, Chill Cosmos says, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Fly, I think. I mean, yeah. Okay, I don't want to talk about the drone. It's kind of a sensitive top topic right now. But yeah, a view from the sky. I mean, that would be, that would be really good. John Reed says, not everyone in the US has guns. Depends on a lot of things, not to worry though. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but of course not everybody has them, but I think uh, a lot of them, or a lot of you, let's say. Uh, Ibrahim watching from Turkey. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I cannot pronounce your name from Russia, from the Urals. I cannot uh, pronounce it, but uh, it's great that you're still uh, following me. That's funny because uh, when I entered Russia, uh, I got a lot of uh, followers from Russia that started following my journey. And for me, it's just really cool to see that a lot of them are still with me and are still following. And uh, yeah, I put Russian subtitles with Google auto translate, so it might not always be great, but I think uh, good enough. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really amazing that uh, you're still uh, still with me. Uh, what? Oh, Robin Guru says somebody just donated you a hundred pounds. Oh yeah, I see it here, but it's anonymous. No, race addiction for your new drone. I love your area shots. Be careful with the trees. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, that is amazing. Really amazing. That's thank you. Uh, John Pay Fifty One says Merry Christmas, Norley. Yes, already Merry Christmas to you. Uh, it's still a week away, but uh, thank you and uh, to you too. Um, oh, Andrew Bell, thank you for your donation. Uh, says Hey, Norley, can you tell please about regular, daily slash weekly maintenance for the no oil change, clean, chain cleaning? In season two, there's no video on this issue. Oh, I, so I just covered that. I think maybe you entered the live chat a bit later because I just uh, uh, said something about that. But uh, I mean, when it comes to daily maintenance, I don't really do that except for pulling the plunger for the chain oiler. I do that every 200, 300 kilometers. I pull the plunger. I don't clean the chain so much anymore. 
because uh, it doesn't really it's not so necessary when you use the oil i think when you use grease it's more important i think <laughs> but hey i'm not an expert um what else uh yeah the oil i am quite uh uh frantic with the oil changes i do them more often than is uh, necessary i think i do them try to do them every 3000 kilometers which is quite a short interval but uh for me that's been working out i think the manual says every 5000 i think but um i think that is like i mean it's the heart of the bike right the engine so i try to take uh, really good care of it <laughs> alex j says you're entertaining thanks <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a good thing, right? <laughs> uh, Craig Orton says, have you been ill whilst traveling? Uh, no, no, so far um, not. Um, no, so let's hope it stays that way. Yeah, sometimes I have a bit of a, I don't know, cold or something, but nothing serious. Jungle Pilgrim says, when you stop every 50 episodes, does that mean you stop riding as well? Yes. Or, I mean, yeah, so that would mean the plan is to then take a break, not ride and just relax and not work because that's my problem uh, when I say to myself, yeah, then I'm going to take a break. I'm already thinking, oh, but wait, if I then take a break, I can uh, write this article for the blog and I can do that and I can work on this. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably really difficult for me to not work, but um, no, that I, I should should. Uh, take care of my r real rest as well. Oh uh, yeah, Johnny Poitra says, how do you feel doing this trip solo knowing Ewan and Charlie from the Long Way series are doing the same one, but with support vehicles slash team. Yesterday I saw a post on ADV Pulse, uh, which said that uh, they arrived in Las Vegas, I think, or their trip is finished. So they've done it incredibly fast because they were they left three months ago. I think in three months they rode from Ushuaia to Las Vegas. So <laughs> that's insane. Or I mean, well, as you know, I'm taking a lot longer. Um, so yeah, there was there's no chance to uh, to encounter them. But uh, now I would not want to trade with them. Not no, not at all. I would never want to have support vehicles and a whole team around me. That's just, oh, it already makes me nervous just thinking <laughs> about it. No, I just want to do my own thing. I want to have the freedom. That's the whole thing. For me, this is the ultimate freedom, feeling of freedom. And I think as soon as you start traveling with other people or support vehicles or anything like that, you lose all of that. And you start to, you have to make plans and discuss and, oh, no, no, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I just want to do whatever I want to do. And that's the main thing. So, I mean, ah, okay, this, maybe it's not completely true. I mean, I I do also, sometimes I do things because I have the channel in mind and I think, oh, maybe this is something that uh, you really like to see. But I try to, um, yeah, just keep, keep myself as free as, uh, as possible, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Ah, maybe that was the question about the 4K. So Kisor says, hi Norli, how do you manage all the 4K footage? Do you, do you carry around a ton of hard drives? Uh, so I have two of them now, and those are those uh, solid state hard drives, external solid states, uh, because the, those are quite expensive, but uh, the standard ones, they have moving parts and yeah they can break especially on the bike and with vibrations and everything so i got two of them and they are both they are two terabyte so i have four terabytes and i think i'm almost full already for those after how long have i been away two and a half months or something so yeah i don't know yet what i'm gonna do i have to probably buy more of them because I, I tried uploading footage on in the cloud, but the problem is just the internet connection and the files are way too big to do that. So there's no way, no, no other way than to just carry around hard drives. And so I have to look for more, but these solid state ones are hard to come by. I already tried to uh, look for them so far. I didn't find any new ones. So well, let's see how it goes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Flo Richie says, would it be easier for you to combine two, three days into one video? Uh, I could do that. Then, then I wouldn't have to work so hard. <laughs> but, uh, 
But I don't know. I've been doing it like this from the beginning. And I do like, I, I always try to tell a story. And each video is kind of a story from a day. So it's, you know, I start here and I end there. And it has a, a beginning, a middle and an end. And that's how I kind of try to uh, make my videos. Um, so... Yeah, if I would do two to three days in one video, that kind of changed the whole setup. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I'll just stick to this and keep on working really hard. <laughs> then I can't complain about it anymore. But okay. Um, hmm. And Raj Hegdis says, what was your favorite experience of writing this season? Love your videos. Travel safe. Thanks. Yeah, I think so far the favorite experience is going to be the horse riding. And maybe that's not what you want to hear. But uh, for me, that was a really old dream that came true. And I just really, really love that place. Yeah, what to say. Um, so, yeah, the horse riding was really, for me, an amazing, amazing experience. Um... <laughs> Stephen Margraf says, you never get the blues. How is that? I guess because I just ride my bike so so much. <laughs> and I think uh, any biker can understand that feeling. So when I'm on the bike, I'm just, yeah, I'm just happy. Uh, Simon Kokaj says, I like your music that you use in videos. Thanks. I spend a lot of time searching for videos or searching for music uh, to go with the videos. And... Um, Sometimes, uh, yeah, I, I invest quite a bit of money into uh, music that I can use uh, for the copyright and everything. I think it's really important. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> the Tessellator says, will your next adventure be on horseback? You know, I did consider it. I was like, how amazing would it be to travel by horse? I can just totally see myself riding, but wow, well, that is that is tough, and that is I mean that's the thing. I am definitely not an expert on horses. I mean I'm not an expert on motorcycles, but I'm definitely not an expert on horses. I wouldn't even know how to really properly take care of them, and uh, I think it would take forever <laughs> to reach Alaska on horseback. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Hare Krishna, how how you do more itchy boot sticker? Would like to paste them on my the stickers are available. So uh, on my website there's a link if you want to uh, purchase an itchy boot sticker. Or do you mean if there's a new design coming? I don't know. I pff, maybe a new design. I would have to find someone to make a new design. At the moment, I feel like I don't really have time to uh, look into that. But uh, maybe it's something for the new year. Uh, try to get some new designs for the. Itchy boot stickers, maybe. Yeah, could be something. Um... <laughs> Ugly canine drone. Oh, that's the second time I see a comment of yours. Your editing format is working for you and they look very good. Do not change. Yeah. I, maybe I should say something about that because uh, for me, it's... Uh, I always try to read the comments because it is important to me to know if everybody still likes what I'm doing and I, I always try to improve. Uh, so I, I think I generally have a feeling for the type of things that you guys like and the things you don't like, but it is so hard. I mean, I always get also negative comments saying that I talk too much, my face is in view too much. Uh, there's too much writing footage. There's not enough writing footage. The music sucks. The it, It's just, <laughs> it's so hard. And I have to keep on saying to myself, you can't please everyone. It's just impossible because not everybody likes the same things. So that's the, that's the problem. The, the, some, some people like something and other people like something else. And I just can't please everyone all the time. And... And I wish I could. That's the whole problem. I wish I could make everybody happy all the time. But I, I just can't. So at some point I just have to say, okay, this is uh, these are the videos that I make. 
Uh, I do my very best for every video to make it as good as possible. But sometimes it's just been a really boring day or nothing happened. Or, I mean, writing in Patagonia, it has been so sparsely populated. And I know all of you really like interaction with local people, but I'm writing by myself <laughs> in like 100 kilometers of, of desert or like in, in nothingness. I just sometimes I just don't meet anyone, <laughs> you know, and I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't want to try to stop a random person on the street to have a interaction just to have something on the channel that just doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't, it's not authentic. I mean, I don't like want to go look for something really. Why, why, why was I saying this? Now I kind of lost the, the story. Um, yeah, anyway, so sometimes, yeah, I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> I think the bottom line is I just really do my best. And and yeah, um, I, I can't do more, I guess. Okay. Um, oh, that's a good one. Andy Zott says, as you've traveled such a lot of the world, is there anywhere apart from Holland you'd think of making home? Excellent question. And I do think about this. And... Uh, um yeah i just really love argentina it, and that i already loved argentina a long time before i think i mentioned before i worked in buenos aires on my last job buenos aires is one of my favorite cities in the world and already for all that time i was thinking if the if the economy in argentina wouldn't be so terrible <laughs> i might go and live here because i absolutely love this country it has so much to offer the people are amazing I can kind of understand them most of the time. So uh, maybe Argentina um, out of, because I've already traveled a lot through South America and Central America, but none of those countries really spoke to me as much as Argentina. Um, but I mean, the Netherlands is still my home though, even though I'm hardly ever there. So yeah, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I probably I'll go back to the Netherlands at some point, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see what happens. I actually like not knowing what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, maybe I'm going to get some water because I am just uh, um, blurting out a lot of talk. Okay, sorry to walk away like that, but uh, I uh, really need some water. Oh, Quacker Man sent, says something really nice. With all the problems in the world, it's amazing how friendly everyone is that you have met. It just shows the love in the world. You're an inspiration for all of us. Uh, it's such a nice thing to say. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's also why I really love making this content because if you watch the news, it is so grim. I mean, it's a, like the mainstream news can be a pretty dark place. Uh, and uh, I like to, yeah, show or, yeah, show that most of the people in the world are good. And there are some incredible places to visit and yeah, see, I don't know. I just really feel like uh, it's great to be able to contribute a little bit um, like that and um, maybe open the eyes of people that uh, I don't know have an idea about a country just based on mainstream media and if I can show them different through my videos I, yeah for me that's uh, I mean yeah what else do I want to achieve for me that's like the highest possible achievement I think to be able to contribute to something good and uh, maybe, yeah, open the, the minds uh, and the eyes of people. I think that's, yeah, incredible. And I, I just, that's something that I never expected to happen when I started the YouTube channel, that at some point I could inspire people or show people that the world is a much better place than they may have thought or something like that. Okay, I'm going really <laughs> philosophical now, but uh, yeah, it's something that, is really uh, something amazing that has happened throughout this journey, which I really 
think it's, it's quite special. And uh, yeah, maybe I want to say one more thing about it because I do think that on the this channel, I think there's a pretty amazing community and there's so many of you who have been with me from the beginning and watch every video and leave great comments. And sometimes it's just a joy to go to the comment section and just see what, what, what you've been writing. And I think it's a, yeah, I mean, I still get the, get the haters. I think it's inevitable if you put yourself out there on social media or on YouTube that you will get hate uh, a lot as well. But overall, I think we have a pretty awesome community of people that are nice to each other and are passionate about travel and motorcycles and just share that. So uh, yeah, okay, that was that. That was the emotional part. Um, let's go to uh, another question. Huh? Oh. Tengai Rose says, Esta debería haber. I think you say that I should have subtitles in Spanish. I do. Okay, not for season one, but the last, I think pretty much all of the videos of season two have uh, subtitles in Spanish. I put Spanish, Russian, Turkish, uh, Portuguese, uh, German, French, Danish, because someone asked me. So, um, yeah. Uh... Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Baxi's here says just ignore the hate. I know, I know, but it is it is really hard to do that. Honestly, um yeah. It's it's really hard to not let it get to you, you know. I mean, I've talked about this before and uh, maybe I'm too sensitive about it, but uh you know, when you read, even if you read 50 nice comments, if there's one really hateful one, that it sticks, right? And it's just like, ah, uh, shouldn't let it get to you, you know? But it's it's hard, it's hard. But anyway, the, the nice people that say nice things, they do, that does really help, you know, to, uh, to keep on going. Um, Petty Nerd says, are you planning on riding dirt roads when you get to the US or sticking to the pavement? Dirt, of course, what a question. No, of course, I'm gonna look for all the best dirt roads. Um, pavement is uh, boring, right? No, not always, but yeah. <laughs> Dennis Nijhuis, Dutch. Hello, <laughs> there's some Dutch people here as well. Uh... <laughs> Michiel Marsban says, when you're back in Holland, you should be on a talk show with Bo. I don't know if they're interested in, in me. <laughs> uh, VP78 says, I have been around 45 states in the USA. Impressive. How many are you going to conquer? I have no idea. I mean, mm, I get a lot of people always ask me, what's your plan for the states? What's your plan? I have no plan. The only plan I might say is I do plan to write, do a like relatively big tour through the USA. I don't want to ride from Mexico straight up to Canada. I, I really want to see um, America as well. I think it's a great opportunity, especially on a motorcycle. But how and where and I, I have no idea. But um, yeah, I'll try to see uh, as much as I can. Uh... Oh, thanks, Randy Pullman for the compliment. <laughs> Oh yeah, Nunu Kos says, aren't people freak out when you enter their place with a helmet and a full uniform like in a cinema robbery? <laughs> yeah, I get often people commenting about it, how I walk into places with my helmet on. You know, I do that for you guys, you know, because here's the thing, then I can record it. Because if I take my helmet off and I have to hold my helmet in one hand and I hold the camera in another hand, I cannot even open the door, right? <laughs> so the only way to kind of in my opinion, film this is if I keep my helmet on. So uh, yeah, and I do feel sometimes a little bit rude by doing that, but I do it all for you. So just so that you know, but um, I mean, you can still see my eyes. So I think people, you know, I have, I have mascara on so they can see that I'm not some dude. And I think that hell, I don't think anyone has ever thought I was a robber. Um, especially if they see me coming on the bike fully loaded with all the luggage on. I don't look like your average robber, I think. 
um, and then with the camera on it and uh, yeah no so um, people give me some looks every now and then but um, I don't think anyone sees me as a, a threat in that sense um, Kevin in paradise says you could do a meetup in the cities you pass through um, I maybe you've noticed it a little bit before but I get a little bit awkward when people recognize me or when people are like oh my god it's your boots <laughs> I've had I've had those reactions and I really do not know how to maintain myself when I get that um, yeah maybe I'm a bit of an awkward person in that sense but uh, uh, I, I did a meet and greet in the Netherlands and uh, I don't think I've ever felt so awkward in my life. <laughs> uh, it was great, uh, but it's just, um, I don't know, it's not really my thing, I guess. I just don't know what to say when people are like, yeah, watch your videos and I don't know what to say. I'm just kind of like, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I, yeah see now I don't want don't know what to say now as well so <clears throat> I'll just go on with the next question um, yeah that's also the thing yeah we are 98% male here says Lord that's also the thing you know and a meetup it would be just crowd of men I don't know it <laughs> makes me so uncomfortable uh, Ah, Claudio Macayone says doing border crossings looks so difficult and annoying. Have you ever felt in real trouble dealing with police? Now, border crossings here between Chile and Argentina are the easiest ever. Um, I think they have really good border agreements. Maybe it's something like that, but they have been the smoothest border crossings uh, so far uh, compared to Asia. And I think later on in Central America, they're going to be uh, a bit of a pain again with paperwork. But I've never felt like I would be in trouble with police. Usually authority, like I said, authorities like police or border officials, usually when they see me arriving by myself on the bike, fully packed, dusty and sweaty or whatever, they usually um, are happy to see me or they're like, oh, cool, you know. Um, so I've never felt like anyone was really trying to give me a hard time, like unnecessarily or something like that. So um, never had a, had a problem uh, there. Uh, <laughs> uh, you all already. Yeah, Dave Churchill says the awkwardness comes from everyone knowing a lot about you and you not knowing anything about them. That's, I think, really, yeah, that's kind of the thing, which makes it a bit weird, you know? Um, yeah, I think you phrased it uh, pretty well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gordon Etheridge says, do you take a good book with you? No, I don't have books. Wait, space and time. <laughs> I don't have time to read books. <laughs> And yeah, space away. So I don't, uh, I don't have books. Um, Lachizar Balev says, "Aren't you afraid that someone will steal your bike during the night?" Uh, no, not really. Most of the time, I can park the bike safely, like behind the gate or fenced or in a garage or something like that. I very rarely have to park her on the street, and if I have to, I have a lock as well. So uh, that should be all fine. Uh, plus. I mean, a dirty looking adventure bike with a foreign plate is not really something people try to steal. <laughs> I think the dirtier, the better. I think nobody wants it. So now I don't really have to worry about that. Huh? Yeah. Perkelena Torres says you should listen to audiobooks while you ride. That's what I do. Yeah. I, I listen to music uh, when I ride. So um, that's what I do mostly. How, how long have we been in the chat? Okay, okay, about an hour now. Okay, so let, let's let's go on for half hour more, and then uh, you're probably uh, sick of me. Um, so then we um, we'll stop. 
uh, oh yeah people watching me were wishing me merry christmas oh jake b says what is your average speed uh, i get this question a lot so i should probably answer this one i would say on a normal gravel road not too hectic i go about 60 kilometers per hour not very fast and on a paved road with nice scenery i go about 80 to 90 kilometers per hour also not super fast but um i like to enjoy the scenery i don't and i don't want to push my bike to the limits if it's not necessary and um i have to say my i mean i've become better at at riding gravel roads for example i mean if i compare how i ride now if i compare that how i was riding with basanti like on the pamir highway and stuff <laughs> man i i've come a long way i'm riding so much better now and i mean i'm still not um I'm uh, not the best rider ever, definitely not. But uh, yeah, it's partly confidence, but also just uh, I know this bike so well now. And uh, if I would be riding in gravel in uh, in the Palmiers, I mean, there were times that I was going like 10 kilometers per hour <laughs> because I was so scared. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's definitely improved a lot. So um, I mean, I don't think I'll be ripping up uh, dust roads or dirt roads at uh, 100 kilometers an hour ever, simply because I don't want to. I don't want to feel like I'm racing. I want to enjoy it as well. So, uh, yeah, but let's see. <laughs> let's see how more I improve. Um... Blowark says, what is that kind of chin mount you use? Uh, I, well, what was the brand called now? Um... I have it here. No, it's not on it. Um, the link is on the website. I, I have a, a blog post on itchyboots.com with all my gear. And there I have the link because I cannot think of the name now. It's uh, I ordered it from the States. That was the only company I could find which had some sort of uh, chin mount uh, like that. Um. Uh, Martin Kobal is asking me about this uh, situation in Chile. Um, in, I think, two videos from now, I will talk a little bit about it and I'll show you some footage. Uh, it's fine. There are protests, even in small towns in Patagonia, there are protests in Chile uh, still going on. Um, so, yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, barricades and uh, stuff like that. I have not, yeah it's fine like i don't consider it dangerous for me it's just a matter of making sure that you don't up end up like with your motorcycle in the middle of a protest when uh, i don't know when there's a tear tear gas what do you call it <laughs> something like that but uh, i mean the protests are against the government and not against random motorcyclists um so yeah uh, i talk to the local people so i know when the protests are going to be and then I just make sure that I don't, I'm not like right in the middle of it. But uh, other than that, uh, I don't, I don't really have to worry about, I mean, Santiago is probably there, there are the main protests or the most dangerous protests. I don't know. So that's something if I can, I am going to try to avoid Santiago. If I don't have a reason to go there, then I'll try to avoid it. But yeah, if I need something for the bike or something like that, yeah, maybe I still have to go. Um, but if I can, I'll try to avoid it. And that's kind of my, uh, my approach. Uh, Marcos Ramos. Oh, did you also ask the last question? I can't, can't remember. Um, oh, now I lost it. <laughs> Where did it go now? Uh, Hmm. Now I, I can't find the question anymore. Oh, thank you, Carl Heinz, for the petrol money. That is awesome. Uh, uh, any accidents? Accidents since the start of Buenos Aires? No, not really. Yep, Deep on Shoe, that's a Roy Enfield classic behind me. I'm sitting in a Roy Enfield uh, shop because Dano is getting a service at the moment. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, uh, I'm just gonna go back to some of the questions that were asked before, because I selected a few that I thought maybe it's nice to talk about. Um, oh no, I already asked, answered most of them. I reflecting me asked me. Uh, hi, Norley. So my question relates to health insurance. Do you have a plan or have any medical cover if you were to become ill? Mm. I mean, health insurance really depends where I'm from, from the Netherlands. We all have health insurance because it's mandatory by law. So for us, it's really normal to have health insurance. And uh, I obviously have a world cover. Uh, so that's an additional uh, part for that. So I'm covered worldwide for anything uh, health related. Um, so yes, of course I have it. Um, I, I think it's in not every country it's so common to have health insurance. But uh, I think if you are doing something like this, then I would definitely uh, get it. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Oh yeah, Thomas Hermans asked me about the touring seat. Does it make a difference? Is it worth to buy it? Yes, <laughs> I would definitely recommend it. For me, it made a huge difference. The stock seat was pretty uncomfortable. I was having pain. And uh, with the touring seat, I don't have pain. It's I can ride for hours on end without feeling anything. So yeah, I can recommend it. It's not very expensive, um, the standard Royal Enfield ones. I think you can buy other uh, touring seats as well. I have so I have the Roy, excuse me, Roy Enfield one, and uh, I think it's really good. Uh... <laughs> okay, our life on two wheels. You simply have to Trans America Trail. It crosses the US from the Carolina. Okay, well, you have to remind me again when I'm closer to there. I mean, I'm getting so many tips from like, oh, when you're in this country, do that or do that. But it's just a bit overwhelming. And the thing is, I don't even know where I'm going to go tomorrow, you know. So um, I really cannot, you know, worry about my route through the US USA when I have so many other places I am going to go through first. So uh, when I'm closer to the area, then uh, remind me. Um, then I can uh, maybe do something with it. Um, oh, TL was saying, where was Josh on the KTM from and traveling to? How long has he been on the road? He was from, um, where is he from now? Seattle. No. Yeah, I think Seattle. Uh, and he, so he rode from Seattle to Ushuaia. Um, and I think he was on the road for one year. So yeah, he was on a pretty big adventure as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what behind the light blinks. I really don't know which light. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> UFO Hunter says, do you have a stunt double? <laughs> now, if I would, then you would see me do wheelies all the time. So yeah, no, I don't, I don't have one. <laughs> Uh, and he says, hi, Norley, do you get sick of answering the same questions again and again? A little bit, <laughs> but that's why I try to not answer, do the same questions all the time. So, so far, I think it works out pretty well that when I announce the live chat, that you can put questions there because then I have time to pick some questions that are uh, relevant to what I'm doing now or which I haven't um, answered all the time yet. Um, so yeah, I try to not repeat myself all the time. So uh, if your question is not answered, then please look at the <laughs> previous live chat because I may have uh, talked about it there. Oh, thank you, Christos Gatidis <laughs> from, oh, Delft. Oh, didn't think that. Nee, ik kan niet even Nederlands praten, Bartem. Dan begrijpt niemand het meer. Um. Ah, oh, it's a LED. That's why it flashes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes uh, that's the thing. Sometimes if I walk into somewhere, then the light flicks has to do with the frame uh, rate. People have been saying like in this country, you need to have this frame rate. And 
I tried it and then I thought, you know what? With the GoPro, I don't want to change the settings all the time. Sometimes it flicks and yeah, just gotta accept it. <laughs> I just don't have um, the energy or the time to all the time change it and look at these settings and yeah. Um, I, yeah. Oh, our, um, SB Rider says, are you going to hike Machu Picchu? No, <laughs> I don't think so. I have been to Machu Picchu before uh, on my previous trip to South America and I walked up there and I remember it was a really exhausting hike, like early in the morning. I really don't think I'm going to go again. And uh, I think if you if people are interested in Machu Picchu, I really think you don't need me to go up there. There are thousands of videos, I think, or information to find about Machu Picchu and people going up there. So uh, I, I'm, since I've already been before, I don't think I want to do it again just for the for the channel. Uh, because, yeah, I think it's just a place that you can find so many videos about that you don't really need me to do it. Right? I hope you agree. <laughs> And don't make me walk up this thing again. I mean, it's a great place. It's super beautiful, but yeah, I'm not too eager to do it again. <laughs> um, huh. Edwin James says, thinking of Marc Antoine, do you wonder if you find a special place to settle down? Maybe, but I think it's also, I don't know, maybe for me, it's also a mindset, you know, I'm so focused on riding to Alaska that I don't know if I would have the right mindset to think, wow, this is really beautiful. I would stay here, you know, but hey, you never, you never know what's, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, Nida say I am using Final Cut Pro at the moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tom V, yes, Dano has ABS, which you cannot switch off. Uh, okay, I go back to some other questions that were asked. Alex by 1991 said, how tall are you? I'm asking for a friend because she wants to buy a Malian and she's afraid she won't be comfort comfortable on the bike. I'm one meter 68, but height doesn't really say anything. Uh, there's shorter people riding the bike, so I think and in any case, before you buy any bike, do a test ride on it, and then you'll see if uh, if you're comfortable with the height or not. So definitely recommend doing a test ride before you buy <laughs> buy a bike. Um... Oh yeah. Alexandra Rossi says, how is the Chilean people friendly? They are very friendly. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Don Brown. Stay leaned into the wind, girl. Well, I think hopefully now I am, you know, going north uh, quickly now. So I am, I've pretty much, much left the really, really bad uh, wind area, uh, like from 40 degrees uh, latitude and uh, south. So hopefully, uh, I will not have uh, too much horrible wind <laughs> anymore. It's quite uh, quite exhausting. Uh, I get some really strange comments about my eyebrows. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Let me see another one. Oh yeah. Shamayal Maji says, please do, please do include local cuisine when on lunch. See, this is another thing that I don't know what to do anymore because people will say that they want, don't want to see the food that I'm eating. And then other people say, show the food that you're eating. So it's one of those things that I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. So I'll just do whenever I feel like recording it, I'll do. And if not, I don't. It's, <laughs> it's really hard to... Uh, what I talked before, I just can't please everyone. So I, I don't know what to do anymore about the food thing. If you still like it or not. I thought in the beginning, people really liked seeing the breakfast. And now, I mean, the breakfasts have been mostly dis quite disappointing. <laughs> or just really small. So not much to show. So uh, I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Maybe. 
Yeah. Um, I already answered this one. This one. Oh yeah, BS Loser1471 said, how do you mount your, mount your gas cans? There are special holders. Uh, you can also find this on itchyboots.com with a link where you can find them. But they're special holders to mount and uh, it's really easy to install. I could install them myself. So that kind of shows how easy it <laughs> was to in install them. Monto Venture says, my question is, do you face plant or fall flat exhausted after working on your videos? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do. Or after a long ride, I face plant on the bed and I'm really tired. Um, which is also, I think this time around, I didn't get any questions on the camping part. I think finally I made that <laughs> clear about the camping. But yeah, that that is what I also really like. Staying in a place that you can... But I can fall on the bed after a long day and yeah, get some rest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, people say we want the food. Show the food. Okay, then. <laughs> James Conway says swim in mountain lakes. Uh, the lakes look amazing, but I can promise you they are extremely cold. This is not for swimming. Okay, maybe maybe some people do, but I'm not so tough. Like, no way. And even if I would swim, uh, I can already tell you, I would never record myself in a bikini. Sorry, but that's something I'm not gonna do on the channel. I'm sure you can understand why. So, uh, <laughs> no, no swimming in lakes. Okay, I get more people saying food. Tyler, Adam, I like seeing the food. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> the Father King, smash that like button. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh. Okay. So yeah, I'm just reading the comments. This is going to be so boring for you looking at me while I'm reading the comments. Okay. Well, I think we got... 15 minutes more and then uh, we're gonna call it a day so if you have any urgent questions oh kojo 2017 says have you considered having a riding partner for short sections of the ride and not really i mean i am a solo rider and i really love this um if i would want to ride with someone i could <laughs> i think it's a conscious choice that i just want to uh, do this ride by myself so, uh, yeah. D Trump, I don't know if that's Donald Trump, says, How you washed your clothes? Again, yeah, something. People do laundry everywhere in the world. You just put your stuff in the laundry. <laughs> I can promise you, I wash my clothes. <laughs> I get this question so often. I don't understand it. Why? But okay. <laughs> Yeah, again, where do you do laundry? In hostels, in guest houses, in laund laundrettes. It's really, it's one of the least challenging things I <laughs> think on the trip. Yeah. Um, yeah, people asking a lot of questions that I've uh, talked about before. So I'm kind of seeing if there's anything what I haven't done. Dennis Keister, at what time do you try to get to sleep? <laughs> why, why do you want to know this? <laughs> I really wonder. No, I think maybe I can say something about it. I always end the video when I arrive in a place and I don't, recording, I don't record the evenings anymore. And I have a couple of reasons for that. Usually uh, when I arrive in a place, I mean, that's the time I... You know, I have to do a lot of things. I have to get all the footage of the cameras. I have to charge all my batteries. So I'm kind of busy for like half an hour or an hour to organize all my stuff, do all of that. And if I record then after again, then I have to again get it off the camera and put it in the right files and do all of that. So 
I don't really like doing that organizing wise and also then I'm just I'm just done you know I don't want to worry about cameras anymore and about batteries and and I just want to have some time off really I think in a way I am the worst youtuber I'm really not I think one of those people that just is glued to the camera and just wants to record everything at all times like my evenings are for myself I talk to my family I do other things talk to friends uh, I don't know try to relax a little bit or work but okay so yeah that for me is when I arrive that's it and then uh, next day we go again so I don't know I hope you can uh, understand that a little bit uh, Sparky O'Brien says have you had any issues obtaining oil filters no because I took like how many did I take with me I think four so far um, so and I mean that can last four times three thousand kilometers. So, and then if I'm in a royal place, a royal Enfield dealer or something, I can uh, buy more oil filters. They're quite small. I mean, they're only they're only this big. So I usually make sure that I have a couple with me, and then it's never a problem. Uh... <laughs> Danielle La Lanarelli says, "Have any of the dogs you've met bitten you?" No, <laughs> thank goodness not. The dogs are, they usually like me unless I'm on the bike. On the bike, they chase me like mad here, especially here in South America. It's been pretty bad with the dogs chasing the bike, but uh, nah, they, uh, they bark and they run and stuff, but uh, none of them are <laughs> trying to bite me. Uh, okay. I think a lot of people tuning in now and asking things that I answered earlier in the chat. Uh, yeah, Einar Valur says, come to Iceland for riding uh, amazing scenery in Iceland. It's just a bit difficult. I mean, you have to ship the bike. It's it's for like for overlanding what I'm doing now. Iceland is obviously a bit more challenging, but um, would love to ride there one day. Yeah, never been to Iceland. So it's actually has been on my list for uh, for quite some time. Yeah. John Hewitt, wild animals, any close calls? Yeah, well, mm. I mean, in, in uh, Argentina, especially the Argentinian side of Patagonia, there was so much wildlife. Um, these guanacos, which were quite big, I never really came very close. I hit two birds almost, like small birds. Uh, a rabbit was a really close one. Uh, what else? No, I think that was it. Yeah, no, no other close calls with animals. Luckily, because yeah, you can't. I mean, if a rabbit suddenly crosses over, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. But um, no, that was it. Ah, Rodney Hobson says, "How's the quality of the petrol you're able to get so far? Pretty good. I have no complaints. I mean, I'm glad I have the uh, the special filter inside the tank." So I don't really have to worry about it so much anymore. But uh, so far it's been looking uh, pretty okay. I mean, some of those really tiny petrol stations in Patagonia, you see them and you're like, I don't know about this. But uh, yeah, the fact that they run out so often also means that they get filled up a lot, I guess. So uh, I think it's okay. Uh... <laughs> Drone racer, how many flies have you killed? Millions. I'm a fly killer. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay. No, again, in that tent. No. Or oh, maybe in Alaska, I will have to keep a tent because. As far as I know, the season is really short in Alaska, obviously, and uh, things get uh, places get booked out like months in advance. And well, I, I cannot book ahead a month in advance. I cannot even book ahead a week in advance because I don't know where I'm going to be. So maybe I have no other option than to bring a tent, but that would mean less videos because it is impossible to bring out a new video every other day. If I would be camping, it's just impossible. So, but hey, 
that's still super far away so uh, we'll see uh, by that time uh, 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 uh. Ian Griffith says can I ask if you are working with Roy Enfield on any projects no I am not working for or if with Roy Enfield so uh, and that's also not my plan I want to stay independent do my own thing I mean obviously uh, I'm in contact with Roy Enfield to find dealers like this and you know I have uh, had contact with Roy Enfield of course but um, no I, I have no desire to uh, to work for a company I uh, quit my job I'm working for myself as my own worst boss as <laughs> As I said before, but uh, try to uh, to keep it that way. Why is the live stream not full screen? Oh, I have no idea. I probably put the settings wrong again. I don't know. It's uh, oh, I've been talking for an hour and a half. I see. <laughs> I was already thinking. I have been talking a lot. All right. So I think then uh, we're gonna call it a day. Uh, I hope you like the live chat uh, and I hope that I could answer some of the questions that uh, I didn't answer before and uh, that you find it there usual in a way and um, yeah so the next video will be uh, in two days again um, and then uh, yeah same schedule as normal so I would say thank you so much for joining me in the live chat for uh, all the people that are donating money, I think it's absolutely incredible. And it's just so amazing to see all the support that I'm getting. And uh, yeah, it's it's really heartwarming to me uh, to see that. And uh, everybody who is so engaged and um, supporting me. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. And it's you guys, the ones who are supporting me all the time, that give me the most... Maybe that's actually a good one because some people said like, what motivates you to keep on going sometimes it really is the comments that i read or the th the support that i get from the people that makes me motivated to keep on creating this content i mean i would do the ride anyway i mean i don't need to motivation to ride my motorcycle <laughs> i have all the the passion for that myself but the motivation to to keep on creating the content and to put all these hours into making the videos um, that comes from you guys so i really want to thank you for that and uh, i'll do more christmas wishes later but if you miss those then now i want to say a merry christmas to all of you i really hope you have great holidays and um yeah then i'll see you in the next video so if you like this live chat please give me a big thumbs up <laughs> And subscribe down below and then i'll see you in the next video uh, okay